So good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you at the uh, Esri Welsh Conference. Um, my name is John Dolphin. I'm a construction project manager at the Hinkley Point C site in uh, in Somerset, so just across the the water from uh, South Wales. Um, I am um, brought at GIS into the the project um, about uh, about two years ago. We started the journey, but it was really only this year that we um, um, fully implemented into uh, into HPC. Um, we started off with a, a very small implementation, and uh, we've grown that uh, um, that user base now to over five hundred and sixty people who uh, use the system daily. Um, and we're also looking now to expand it into our contract partners. So we'll be tapping into you know the thousands of uh, personnel that uh, are accessing the sites, and will hopefully use the system as well to benefit their their work. So, um, this is a short presentation, about ten or fifteen minutes. Or so, so I can talk you to you a little bit about Hinkley, um, and then we'll show you what we've done in terms of building up uh, the, the product. Um, and really for me, there's uh, there's two sort of uh, key messages here. Firstly, you know, it has been a fantastic tool to aid collaboration, um, particularly around clarity of information. There's a, a lot of information on a project like uh, like Hinkley, and um, you know, bringing that clarity to every party so that we're talking off the same hymn sheet is really important. I think uh, as a result of that, you know, we've seen improvements in, in quality. Um, there's definitely uh, improvements in safety where everyone knows exactly what's going on and when it's happening. And uh, I think that's all um, resulted in uh, improvements as well to productivity. So although Hinkley is a massive project, um, I think uh, another key message I want to put out there is that um, I found the, uh, the tool incredibly scalable as well. So whether you're on a, on a large uh, mega project or whether you're on a, a small um, you know, fairly local project. Um, I think there's benefits there from from GIS for for everybody. So hopefully you enjoy what um, um I'm about to show you, and um, we'll kick off with a little bit of an overview of uh, Hinkley project itself. Thank you. So a quick uh, update on Hinkley. So Hinkley, uh, for those you aren't aware, is uh, is the first nuclear power station in a, in a generation, and it's going to be a massive uh, contribution to the UK's energy needs, approximately seven percent of our usage. Um, and it's all, I see the, the message with nuclear is it's all about uh, you know, providing zero carbon electricity um, and providing, of course, that, that base load in nuclear power stations are always on, they're always generating. And um, the big thing about Tinkley is that it's one of the uh, one of Europe's largest infrastructure projects and it's right here in the, uh, the southwest of the country, just across the, uh, the water from, uh, from Wales. Um, and just to highlight uh, how important Tinkley is across the country, you know, it's uh, it really is contributing massively to the uh, the UK economy, and uh, in Wales alone, there's a hundred and fifty five um, individual suppliers based in in Wales. Um, and the project itself, you know, if if you you're not aware, is is absolutely huge. You know, it covers a very large uh, landmass. Um, it's got extensive amounts of pipe work, cabling, um, huge amounts of uh, materials have been moved during the earthworks phase. Um, there's a hell of a lot of uh, structural steel, uh, a lot of concrete rebar going in, um, and there's a lot of people um, coming to the site. I think uh, at the moment we're, we're up to 6,000 people a day on the, on the site. Um, I'm really here just a, a few photos if you, uh, you haven't seen it to give you a little bit of uh, an insight into what it's looking like at the moment. So uh, down the bottom right here, this is one from uh, back in the summer there, August uh, 21. Um, showing uh, reactor one and um, just behind it you can see the turbine hall with the uh, the blue pillars there um, but you can see just how precious space is on the site and um, you know it's uh, it's a very congested area to work so logistics is extremely important uh, a little bit of a closer view on uh, on unit two and uh, just a few stats there highlighting that um, it is a learning process and as we get into unit two things are getting slicker things are getting better and uh, more efficient and it's really that uh, efficiency which we're looking at supporting with the GIS. So um, this one of uh, Conventional Island, and um, this is the, the structural steel work which will go into supporting the um, slab, which will obviously take the uh, the generators. Um, and uh, just to highlight there, the, the complexity of the the, the models. Um, this is the, uh, the electrical building, HF building. Um, but it shows you that... Um, you know, although it is very complex, you can simplify it by slicing and dicing that into different floors and different uh, rooms, which will um, help with the permanentry and uh, controlling the work on, on site in a safe manner. 
So this is the main landing page or homepage for the, the system. As you can see, it's it's quite a nice slick sort of interface. And that's really important when you're trying to engage people and get people to you know, use the system and explore the system. Um, so along the top of the, uh, the screen here, you can see that there's um, individual tabs there for the various different teams. And that gives them immediate access into their own um, working areas where they've got dedicated information to their, their, their particular um, functions on site. Um, coming down the way, you can see we've got a number of key um, applications. So the site context map is really important to us, and we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. That's got uh, all of the other layers of information which we have available to us in a very easily um, accessible area. Um, we use the aerial imagery extensively. Um, so this is this particular app gives us the ability to to slide between different um, um, images to see what's changed over a period of time. The three D um, capabilities are. are expanding rapidly at this point in time and we find that gives people a, you know, a really good uh, um, bit of context there when they're planning their works and then the one on the right hand side is an uh, example of a story map which basically paints the picture of, of how we've uh, introduced GIS into uh, into the nuclear new build. We've got other various other applications as well um, which are all designed to be used by individual teams to support their work so the floor plan apps um, is bringing in models and uh, slicing them into individual floors. So that's allowing people to see um, what's going on on each floor, which is very important as we start looking at permitry um, and um, construction uh, arrangements. Um, area ownership, um, we'll look at that again in a second. Um, that shows how uh, people are responsible for different areas of size and helps us to fulfill our, our duties as a, as a principal contractor under the, the CDM regulations. Um, and when we've got some various other specialist areas, so you know the, the geology um, uh, map you know, is, is a very detailed set of information, and so we keep that um, majority of that information in, in a separate space. And then one thing which uh, we're we're expanding the use of is just to show how the project is um, is being used across the world. So a simple uh, app there which basically shows where our supply chain is located. So if we drop into the site context map application. Uh, this is where we have all of the layers that um, we've collected, so all the layers of data that we've collected across the project. Um, and there's over, well over 100 different uh, data sets that we've got in, in the system at uh, this point in time. So, um, as you can see, you know, it's um, uh, overlaid onto an Northern Survey map, and uh, we're using the aerial imagery, which we collect uh, every month, to uh, um, give people the, uh, the appropriate sort of context for the site. Um, what we have on the bottom is a number of widgets, and that's how we've uh, categorised our, our different sets of information. And so we can bring those up and very quickly um, bring up uh, the data sets that are relevant or important to us. So one of the key things for me in, in terms of getting uh, people organised is to, for them to understand how we've carved up the site. Now, the project uh, has evolved, and we've um, we've given the, 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 the site various naming conventions. So actually one of the, uh, the simplest things is just to show people exactly what those uh, naming conventions are for different areas of the site. So here's one which we call K-Zones. Um, we also use uh, W-Zone naming convention within the, um, uh, the the main part of the site. Um, and we've got um, various other um, uh, naming conventions as well. Perhaps one of the most relevant is uh, is the use of, um, of area management. So this is how we carve out the site and uh, allocate you know, specific responsibilities to different teams. And um, what's great is that we can click on... Uh, any of these areas and very quickly see who's got responsibility for that uh, that area um, and that helps in the, in the communication and particularly if you're, you're new to the project as well let's um, remove all those uh, those layers so um, if we move through um, we've talked about uh, compliance we can very easy you know flick on the uh, uh, the site boundaries you know, which is um, um, very useful for um, certain applications we can then bring in you know, all of the uh, the structures um, that we're building. So you, uh, our, our galleries as well, let's get those up. And you can see very quickly, you know, we start to build up um, a, you know, a very clear picture of uh, what it is we're doing on, on the site. So if I just hide um, the, uh, the structures a second, and we'll start um, showing you a few of the other tabs here. So infrastructure, um, we can put in all of our, uh, our designs there, infrastructure designs. Um, we can bring in all of the um the as built information which is clearly you know very important you know for when we're planning out to work so i've just brought in there you know the the earthing which is in, in place you know the electrical um, supplies which are in place and we can start layering up you know all of the other as built services as well um 
going across the other way here, um, we've got uh, various um, asset uh, information you know, which we're, we're bringing in. So um, our, our site operations teams you know, deal with all the uh, dewatering, water supply networks. Um, they look at the allocation of compounds you know, within the, uh, the construction phase and how those are coordinated. Um, they're also looking at uh, you know, various site coordination and uh, um, things like uh, fire hydrants as well. So we can start showing all this information you know, in one place uh, in a very easily accessible uh, manner. Um, logistics, you know, clearly very important for a, a major construction site. So we, we have all of our, our roads here, whether they're construction roads or whether they're um, ultimately they're the permanent roads which we bring in. Um, and emergency preparedness as well. You know, this is um, this is one of the sort of key um, safety sort of uh, uh, uses for for the GIS. Um, and we'll look at um, the way that they're that team is using the system um, a little bit later on. But we can bring up you know, the emergency uh, coordination grid here. We can bring up all the, the fire assembly points, um, all the rendezvous points, um, you know, the medical centers that uh, we have um, um, at uh, Hinkley, and uh, restart, um, um, bring all that, uh, that information to life. Other data sets we have um, here around uh, the other safety aspects, so with things like um, you know, the asbestos, which we have on site, um, you know, cost store locations, um, and then offshore as well, because um, this isn't, obviously isn't just limited to terrestrial applications. So, you know, when we um, um, bring in data sets around uh, uh, UXO, you know, we can bring those um, onto the uh, um, onto the imagery as well. Um, the environment teams, you know, I think uh, GIS traditionally had uh, quite a you know, had its had its base in uh, environmental purposes. Um, and we're you know different here either. So we can bring up you know all of our sites of uh, special scientific interest. We can bring up you know key uh, bits of environmental information. Um, and again, you know uh, information which is pertinent to, to those teams. So you can see you know it's a very rapid rapidly build up a, a picture of what it is that you you're interested in. Um, in terms of the um the construction sort of side of things as well, we can bring in um. You know things like crane locations. So hopefully, it gave you a bit of an idea about the uh, level of information which we got um, brought into the the GIS um, at uh, Hinkley. So let's let's move on and have a look at the um, some of the sort of specific things. And one which I'm really quite um, proud of, um, proud of the team has pulled together, is this workflow around uh, generator permits. And um, this was done really in response to um, uh, an issue which we uh, we were faced with. Which was um, recognising that with the number of generators we had in site, we actually started to come under um, the European uh, Emissions Directive, and so that meant that we had to have a, a much closer ho uh, hold on what um, generators we had on site. So we developed this um, this uh, suite of applications, which uh, allows our um, contractors to basically come in and um, um, request where they're going to put a, a generator onto the site uh, in a very easy to use um, interface. So literally, you know, the, the guys were coming in, clicking on um, a, a new location for, for a generator, um, inputting um, all the information which was required. Um, and this, was, I should say, was, was previously done on a, on a spreadsheet. Um, and so didn't have any um, spatial information um, associated with it. Um, and then this is getting submitted into a, uh, into a workflow, which then goes to two of our, our teams on site for approval. So firstly, to the, uh, the electrical team, to a... Uh, basically check that uh, there isn't a, a, a tie-in point from the construction power network which they could use and then secondly from the uh, the environment team as well for their approval um, before finally ending up um, with the, uh, the deputy site director for him to approve you know bringing any new generator onto site um, so that's that workflow then culminated in um, um, a dashboard yeah, so if I drop into the uh, deputy site director's uh, dashboard here you know, we can see exactly what um, um, numbers of generators are on the site at uh, any given time. Um, we can look at what's, um, what's uh, waiting for approval. We can see what um, uh, contractors have got uh, what numbers on, on site. And all of this data then starts to uh, allow us to, to build up a picture um, and get the insights from that data and help us to actually improve and optimise our, our usage of, of generators and, and look for um, ways of uh, actually reducing the numbers that we've got. So very briefly, I just wanted to show the uh, 3D capability as well that we're starting to explore at uh, HPC and we'll uh, continue to do so. So um, it's very nice you know, that we've got all the GIS functionality and we can also bring in um, uh, 3D models. So this is, a, this is a Revit model which has been brought in. And uh, very simply, you know, we, we 
gives excellent context for what we're actually building on on site, and uh, gives people a, an easy way of be able to drop down through those uh, the structures and understand exactly what's uh, what's going on. And as we get into the the more MEH sort of phase of the project, um, I'm sure this is going to find lots of applications in terms of controlling work and permitting work within individual areas of a, of a building. So this really has been a fantastic journey over the last nine or ten months or so. Um, and we've achieved it with a relatively little resource. We've had a, a full-time um, GIS analyst and we've had a, a part-time um, embedded product specialist from Esri. And um, a little bit of a push from myself, but uh, a lot of good uh, input from uh, the teams on, on site who've been very interested in, uh, in leveraging this tool to its best ability. Um, it, it is a fantastic tool. There's a vast array of information there. And um, I often describe it as this visual portal to information. And... Um, I joke with the team and say that uh, you know if, if a picture paints a thousand words, then a map paints a thousand pictures, and uh, you know this this tool really is helping to leverage you know the benefits that uh, we anticipated around uh, really good clarity, really good situational awareness, um, helping to improve uh, um, our levels of quality in right first time, um, helping to improve our safety, and uh, ultimately this all leads to to better productivity. So. Thank you for listening and uh, I'm really looking forward to fielding your questions a little bit later on today. Thank you. Bye-bye.